Okay, so uh, let me know if you have any queries, question regarding last lecture or last lectures. <clears throat> then we'll start uh, uh, today's class. So you don't have any question. So this, uh, <coughs> so no question has two meaning. One is that you are uh, understanding everything and good. So no queries, no question. And other thing you know, you are not understanding anything such that you can ask question. So uh, I don't know, you can, uh, you can tell me better that uh, what is the actual case. Sir. Yeah, tell me. Sir, I should spin part to miracle Samadhani Arai. I should spin, I have not taught you. I should spin, uh, there is something, uh, um, for example, say it is a, uh, another angular momentum. Spin is angular momentum, orbital angular momentum is also angular momentum, total angular momentum is also angular momentum. There is another thing which is called isospin is also angular momentum. Sir, yes, so addition of isospin. Addition of isospin uh, uh, has, I have not taught you addition of angular uh, isospin. I taught you addition of angular momentum. And isospin is also angular momentum. So it is same. Sir, you example the other or P plus P to D plus Pi plus. Sir, O may. Or right hand side where d plus pi plus equal to one one multiplicity case huh. that deuterium uh, deuterium has no isospin that i said so either if you understand that or you accept that uh, uh, <coughs> that it is uh, i said that if you have two or more particle has different charges or same mass then we can represent them with their isospin state. For example, proton and neutron, if we assume their masses are same, initially people used to say a long ago that their masses are almost same. So they can be represented doublet. One state is proton, another state is neutron of a isospin. So isospin half. So isospin half, why? Because there are two states and a half angular momentum has two state so now if i have a pi on pi on has pi plus pi minus pi zero three state <clears throat> so it should be isospin one because isospin one or angular momentum one has three components so isospin one will also will have three components so pi on can be represented by a multiple of isospin one similarly if you have uh, uh, four the charge state of a particle, then it can be isospin 3 by 2. Okay. So, so, so now deuterium has only one charge state. There is no deuterium, uh, any other charge state. So, it can be isospin 0 or any other particle uh, who has um, isospin uh, only one. Uh, charge state, uh, you will have uh, isospin 0. So, uh, right hand side you have deuterium, so isospin 0 and pi on. Pi on has isospin pi plus is 1, 1, pi minus is 1, minus 1, pi 0 is 1, 0. How you decide that? That also I told you in the class. Third component of the isospin, for example, pi plus it is 1, pi 0 it is 0, pi minus it is minus 1. So, these components is related to the charge. There is some formula. So, that you have to see in the uh, book, particle physics book. When it will be taught in your class, you will find that how the third component of isospin related to charge. So, depending on that, you decide whether pi plus will have 1, 1 state or pi plus will have 1, 0 state, depending on the third component. So, it is the third component relation. So, I wrote that. Now, maybe that, that up to that, what you ask, there should not be any problem according to my understanding. You may have a problem to solve the assignment problem which I give you. 
but for that you can wait assignment problem may not be all that i have taught in the class it may need additional information which i expect student to discover themselves otherwise you will not be learning everything i'll tell in the class everything i'll solve in the class you'll reproduce in your open book exam then nothing will learn you'll get 80 percent marks and you will without learning anything so assignment problem which i gave you have additional thing and that additional thing will come from your understanding your uh, uh, thinking power and that distinguish between good student and bad student or they will also encourage the student who has uh, problem they can st uh, start thinking and and they will learn better okay so problem i'll not discuss i'll give some hints maybe but uh, in some tutorial class will <coughs> so regarding the hint so first that to solve that problem i given in the cross section sigma a sigma b sigma c 9 is to 1 is to 2 that problem you have to first add angular momentum one and half because pion and proton neutron are involved so proton neutron is isospin half sector pion is isospin one so first you have to do the addition of angular momentum one and half then you calculate all the pi plus p, pi uh, minus p, pi zero n, all these states in the both in the coupled and decoupled Hilbert space. Now, when you calculate the cross section or amplitude, amplitude is just a interacting, the, the scattering is due to some interaction. For example, two charged particle uh, scatter, that means they have. Uh, Coulomb interaction. So always some interaction will be there. So pion nucleon system will have scattering due to some interaction. We don't know that interaction. So suppose that interaction is H, then your amplitude will be the expectation um, that H and sandwich between two incoming state and outgoing state. Okay. So <clears throat> that you have to calculate. There you will find that and there are two, com two uh, contribution in the amplitude. One coming from the isospin 3 by 2, another will come from the isospin half. There you have to assume something that the amplitude from isospin 3 by 2 is much, much greater than I uh, amplitude from isospin half. So if you uh, assume this, this assumption I have not mentioned and this is the extra thing you needed for this. Otherwise, everything is known. It, exactly same as my earlier problem. So if you assume that the amplitude due to M, uh, isospin 3 by 2 is greater, very, very greater than amplitude due to isospin half, then you will get that formula 9 is to 1 is to 2. So this is a hint in language. Now, now you try to solve yourself okay any any other question okay sir uh, sir where we can find this dependence of uh, jet component of isospin on charge any particle physics book any any uh, elementary particle physics book griffith or anything halgen martin any any particle physics book you or you make a google search how the third component of isospin depend on charge. Google boy will okay. tell you in 10, 10 seconds. Okay, so let me go to the, uh, I am sharing my screen and then I'll uh, continue with the identical particles. So in last class, I defined identical particles Identical particles are those particles which you cannot distinguish by any measurement. Any measurement of this particle. You can measure mass of the particle. You can measure uh, charge. You can measure spin, parity or anything. Any, any observable quantity they will have same. Then you will call those particles are identical particles. Identical particles are also called indistinguishable indistinguishable the english meaning is that they cannot be distinguished 
those are called indistinguishable okay okay so let me go to my jam board and uh, this this i taught and then uh, i'll tell you uh, that uh, why this uh, is uh, important let me uh, sorry this uh, maybe uh, no no some old notes are coming i don't know uh, huh, maybe this one is related to you of oh. where is the Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> identical. Uh, then I also said that uh, there are there may be situation where uh, there will not be any overlapping wave function. If there is no possibility of overlapping wave function. Then in quantum mechanics, you can uh, consider that they may, uh, uh, there is no point of considering them. Okay, so let me first tell you that where uh, difference will come. Suppose I am considering the scattering. Scattering of say two electron. Two electron is identical. One electron and another electron you cannot identify. Two electron has all properties same, so they are indistinguishable. They are identical. Okay. Now I'm considering the scattering in the center of mass frame. This electron is coming. This electron is coming, and they can. This electron can go this way. This electron can go this way. So this is one possibility. So electron is coming. Electron is coming, and say let me write this electron and in this here this electron okay so this is electron this but i don't know if the electron are identical then i don't know whether this uh, which i detected this side say suppose this is my detector one and suppose this side is my detector two so which is detected in uh, detector one is that coming from the left electron or the electron which is coming from the right that we don't know if the electron are identical that means that means that this possibility is also there so we don't know that which is the actual scattering kinematics this from left is go to the d1 or from the left going to the d2 that we don't know so, so one has to one has to consider one uh, describe quantum mechanically both the possibilities. But classically, classically, uh, no indistinguishability in classical mechanics. In classical mechanics, why? Because classical mechanics always you can uh, you can identify two same particle who has the same mass, same charge, same uh, um, uh, all other things. You can measure uh, um, all the inherent properties are same. Still, you can identify classical particle by so classical classical particles. <clears throat> can be distinguished by following their path. I can follow the path of a classical particle because classical particle has a definite path. Classical particle has a definite path. Quantum mechanical particles does not have any path. So uh, this is another important concept. Let me uh, let me uh, explain. 
there are two two ways to explain one is from uncertainty principle which is easier to explain another is from young double slit experiment which i'll not go those who are interested read uh, Feynman lectures volume 3 that uh, uh, where you have nice discussion on uh, um, a young double slit experiment so my point is that uh, quantum particle does not have any path. So what I'm going to the point, my point is that indistinguishability or the characteristic of identical identity, identical particle is only a important in quantum mechanics. It is not important in classical mechanics because classical particle you can follow which particle you can follow by their path i mean if it is a classical particle i can follow this electron uh, path whether it is going in this way and this electron path in this way so i can say that left electron is going to the um, detector right electron uh, going to the uh, um, detector too so i i i I'll, I'll consider this kinematics this will be my scattering angle and i'll find the scattering cross section but here scattering angle is now uh, not theta but pi minus theta if this is the theta then this is pi minus theta so this uh, scattering cross section considering this geometry is different from the scattering cross section considering this geometry in general in in some cases it may be same but in general they are different okay so what i am saying that if it is a classical particle i will know whether scattering is happen in this way or this way but if it a particle is quantum particle, quantum particle does not have any path, which I'll explain. I have not explained. Classical particle path is known. Quantum particle, there is no path. Uh, then for quantum particle, both possibilities are there. And one has to consider both. And that we'll see when we'll discuss the scattering cross-section of a identical part, two identical particles. You'll find that the contribution coming from both the uh, diagrams will contribute okay now now let me is that clear now now i'm going to tell you the quantum particle does not have path what is the meaning of path path means that i know the position x at t if i know the position at t for all x uh, all t then i'll say i know the path so at x1, it is here, x, x2, here, then x3. So I, I know if you have a very close thing, then you will know the path. But if you if I know the in quantum particle, you cannot know the position of a particle at, at an instant of time. Because then delta x uncertainty in position will be 0. If I know the particle definite position, then delta x will be 0. But quantum particles are supposed to obey the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which says that the uncertainty in position and uncertainty in momentum will be greater or equal to h cut by 2. This is Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Now, if this is equal to 0, then this has to be infinity. Then only you can have that product will be some finite constant or greater than some finite constant. So, delta x cannot be um, 0. If delta x cannot be 0, then we do not know the x at any time. So, if it is not known, then we do not know the path. So, that is the idea and in Young double slit experiment uh, demonstrate this uh, um, uh, very nicely. So, you can, uh, you can see uh, that. So, quantum particle may have a path which is hazy enough that means at every instant of time every instant of time you will have a width okay this will be your delta x right this this the width of this will be your delta x. 
so quantum particle will have a hazy kind of thing so it cannot have a sharp part that that is very easy concept from so in quantum mechanically uh, identical particle is important concept so so uh, is that clear to everybody this concept so let me go to the next uh, um, uh, slide and uh, next page and and i'll explain that how you'll find the wave function if the particles are identical so that is all about you want to learn that quantum mechanics so what will be the energy eigen value and eigen function if the if you have more particle in a certain potential box potential uh, oscillator potential box potential any other thing so you want to learn the okay so that i'll uh, discuss now and it is very simple argument uh, suppose we have two non identical distinguishable particles suppose distinguishable particles electron and proton they they are distinguishable their mass is different charge is different so they can uh, <clears throat> and i make a position measurements one dimensional so two distinguishable particle in one dimensional so let us consider very simple example so i make a position measurement position uh, measurement of these two particle and i found that at x equal to a first particle and at x equal to b is the second particle the position of first particle at this measurement i can uh, um, think that this uh, this i can denote by that this particle has position first particle has position a first particle position c so it can be determine uh, can be represented by a wave function which have these two entities okay so this may be the wave function now if i have the first particle at b measurement uh, first particle at b position and second particle as so this x1 and let me write x2 second particle at a position i'll my denote my wave function by this that means first position is the position value of the first particle this is second one is the the position of the second particle <clears throat> now if they are uh, if they are uh, now identical so if they are identical then what what will be the my wave function ab or ba because that i don't know which one is first particle and which one is second particle i don't know so my wave function will be this or this i don't know if you say that this then why not this if you say this then why not this okay so let us let us denote that wave function we don't know so let us denote this some some combination of a b so let me write in by denoting that identical part so best way that we can think of that they will be the superposition of this two state so let us write beta times ab i am not putting comma but in general there will be comma times gamma ba okay superposition principle in quantum mechanics we can apply because our quantum mechanics is linear quantum mechanics is a linear theory i will not teach you why it is linear but you find yourself why it is linear quantum mechanics is linear so my question mark this is a topic which is supposed to learn in first course in quantum mechanics and we are in the third course so i am not um, if you anybody has anything you will uh, discuss but uh, otherwise you try to find quantum mechanics is linear means what what is the meaning of that and for a linear theory important characteristic is that superposition principle is valid so superposition principle will be applicable okay so uh, what i'll do i'll um, make the superposition of these two possibility 
this can be a solution this can be a solution so their linear combination also will be a solution so that is the superposition principle so i can think of that if the particle are identical i make a position measurement i find one particle at a another particle at b then immediately i can think of that uh, their wave function will be something a b i don't know exactly whether a b or b a but uh, i can take the linear combination because these are the two possibilities good but now now uh, now uh, if i interchange uh, if I interchange this particle, so uh, I, I uh, first I said that let me let me go back to old. Uh, I said that one particle uh, uh, one particle is found at A and another is at B. So if I if I have I said that one particle found at B and another particle at A, then I can have the wave function psi B A, right? First measurement will give you B, second measurement give you A, which particle I don't know. Then this is also the wave function, but and this wave function will be same as this wave function, right? I don't know when which particle is what. So if I interchange them, then I'll get the same wave function and quantum mechanically same wave function means that is proportional to some constant. They are same. Psi and some constant C of psi, these two are identical wave function. All properties of quantum mechanics, if it is valid for psi is also give you the same result for C psi. This C will go away in the normalization. It will be absorbed in normalization. Okay, so this is so two wave function are same means they are up to a overall constant. This you know. So psi a b a should be psi a b. So let me write, let, let me calculate this. This side is psi a b, which I already know alpha times beta times a b plus gamma times b a b a. Okay, alpha times and this side is. B A, so it will be beta times B A plus, no, no, uh, alpha times, sorry. Alpha times B A, alpha times A B. This I obtain from here. Psi A B, so I make a B A, so A will be replaced by B, so beta times B A, gamma times a B. Okay, that I wrote probably. No. Sorry. So 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 sorry sorry sorry. I, I did mistake. So this this I am getting directly from here, this side. Okay. This side you just go uh, it is beta times a b state plus gamma. Now I interchange B A. So beta times B A, gamma times A B. Okay. So this will be beta and this will be gamma. Now compare this side is coefficient of beta B A B A. So beta equal to alpha times gamma and gamma equal to alpha times beta. Gamma equal to alpha times beta. So if I substitute here this gamma value here, so beta equal to alpha times alpha times beta implies alpha square equal to 1. So, alpha should be plus minus 1. So, what I get if I interchange the particle, I get only a plus minus sign. This cannot be any constant, but only plus minus. So, that information I got from the simple theory. This is a very simple theory. By the way, this part of the theory I am teaching you from R. Shankar quantum mechanics book. Uh, nowhere else you will get this is fantastically written there. So, you can read also R. Shankar quantum mechanics identical particles for this part. Okay. So, so what is the very important result I am getting? Alpha equal to plus minus 1. So, if I interchange my particles for two identical particles, wave function is either symmetric or anti-symmetric. 
So when we interchange We have uh, the wave function is either symmetric or anti symmetric. Okay, that means alpha equal to one psi B A state is plus psi A B. So, this is called symmetric state alpha equal to minus 1 psi B A is minus psi A B. Okay. So, this is anti symmetric. Okay, very nice. So, we obtain a nice result that in case of uh, identical particles, if they are uh, wave function will be symmetric and wave function uh, either symmetric or anti symmetric. And now I want to say something which I will not able to teach you in this class. Uh, um, nature obeys uh, the symmetry. This, this I will not able to convince you. Nature obeys the symmetry. This means, I will tell you some information. What is the meaning that particles like pi on, particles like photon, uh, etcetera, which has even multiple of spin, h cut by 2, which has a spin spin even multiple that means which has spin equal to 0 h card h or 1 or 2 these particles always found in symmetric state and particle like electron proton uh, uh, neutron, uh, all these quarks, uh, all these particles, they, they, it is observed, they are found to be in the, which has this, this has spin, uh, all are spin, uh, odd multiple, in anti-symmetric state. And by this time, you all know these particles are called bosons, and these particles are called fermions. So, our uh, life is simple. We now conclude that bosons, uh, if there are two identical bosons, the wave, if I interchange them, wave function will be symmetric. And if the two fermions, identical fermions, then wave function will be anti symmetric. But proof of this, this is, this is, I am saying some observation from nature. Nature obeys the symmetry and it is found. But if you want to prove the spin statistics theorem, theorem, then you need a rigorous knowledge of quantum field theory, QFT is required. So, only, only the spin statistics is theorem that why the spin half particles or spin 3 by 2 particles will obey Fermi Dirac statistic and why the spin integers 0, 1, 2, 3 particles will boson the Bose-Einstein uh, statistics. That uh, to prove that you need uh, the rigorous knowledge of quantum field theory will beyond the scope of this course or also next course in quantum field theory. So, only those who are interested after completing MSc, they can find, uh, learn more field theory and then this can prove. So, I am not going to prove. But the spin statistics theorem, you should know the statement. Okay. So, this, this is that.
Now, now let us consider some example. So we have learned that uh, if the particles are identical, if they are bosons, then then uh, their wave function will be symmetric. If they are fermions, their wave function will be anti-symmetric under interchange. Okay, symmetric and symmetric. Okay, <clears throat> so now we will consider example. Any question up to that? No theory. No more theory from here. But today, rest of the 20 minutes, I'll consider one, two examples, and this will be clear, absolutely clear to you. But do you have any question up to this? And, and I'll give you a long list of problems on identical particles. 15, 20 problems already I have old problems. So those I'll give you to learn, but uh, try to observe how I solve this example means I'm solving a problem basically. So how I solve this problem exactly follow the same technique, same method, and you will also get the answer of any problems. Okay, so suppose I have a box problem. Quantum mechanically, uh, you all have solved this problem. Suppose I have an infinite well at x equal to 0 and x equal to L and say only one particle is there of mass n. So first, you uh, we, we want to consider say two, three particles inside this wall. But first, we need one particle solution. One particle solution is known to everybody. One particle solution, then from there, we'll consider three particle or two particle solution. So problem is that I have a in my box potential. Box potential, everybody knows that zero to L, uh, no potential, but at x equal to zero and x equal to L, infinite potential. So particle is confined to that, it particle will be always there. So this is, here I have a uh, question to you, uh, for a box particle inside a particle, is Hamiltonian commutes with the moment, um, sorry, uh, just, just a moment, I forgot this, um, hmm. This uh, for this box problem, this is a this is a question for first course in quantum mechanics, BSc. So, what is the value of h comma p for a particle in the box? Okay, so you don't have to answer right now. If, if you answer right now, you'll get a wrong answer. Think of it when I am asking the question. There is some important physics behind it. So, the particle one particle solution everybody knows. So, let me ask some question. Uh, Sip Sokti Tiwari, can you tell me that what is the solution of a particle in a box? What is the energy eigenvalues and I? Sir, uh, wave function will be wave function will be under root two by L sine n pi x upon L, where sin L will run n from... pi x over L. Okay. Yes, sir. And no, ah. when normalized, it will be under root two by L. Ah. So we are not bothering about normalization. You are right. Root two by L and energy eigenvalues n square pi square h cut square upon 2 ml square good very good so this is the one particle solution from one particle solution i'll consider the multi particle solution so this is the example we are considering okay so first step so first step is you have to write one particle solution so let me write in the box whatever problem is given to you Assuming that only one particle is there, what is the solution? So if only one particle is there, your energy eigenvalues will be this and a wave function will be this. Remember, n should be 1, 2, 3, not starting from 0 up to infinity. So first step is find one particle solution. You don't have to solve it. One particle solution you should use from your earlier knowledge. In, in exam, don't try to solve this problem for one particle so that that uh, you are not supposed to do in this course but if you don't know then in rough papers you have to do but otherwise you just borrow it from your knowledge now suppose there are let us consider three particles and these three particles are say distinguishable so 
So then what will be the ground state energy? Ground state energy of these three particles. So you know, probably this you know, this is again an information when you consider multiple non-interacting non three particles, remember distinguishable non-interacting, they don't interact. If there is interaction, then you have it is much more complicated. Schrodinger equation will change, you have to find solution, etc. So first we will consider that non-interacting. So if they are non-interacting, then ground state, see energy, energy always uh, adds up, no? Adds up and psi are get are multiplied. This whether you know or not, when you have solved three dimensional problem, you use method of separation variable. So in method of separation variable, you must have seen this that wave energies are add up and wave function will be multiplied. So if I know the energy for first, second, third particle, I'll just add up. If I know the wave function for one, two, three, because these are distinguishable. So I don't have to consider any symmetric and asymmetric. That will come later. So energy of the first particle, then I'll add energy of the second particle, then energy of third particle. So and, and I need to be the minimum. Ground state means minimum. So it will have minimum when the all three particles will be ground state of this E1 state. So it will be E1 plus E1 plus E1, right? Schematically, if I draw this, my let, let me draw. This is my n equal to 1 state or maybe little down, let me draw. Okay. So suppose this is my n equal to 1 state and its wave function is E1 and uh, uh, sorry, e, e1 is the energy. Suppose this is my second state, n equal to 2, and wave function will be uh, psi 2, and energy will be e2. And suppose this is my th n equal to 3 state. They are not equispaced, but uh, you understand. And psi 3. Let me let me write this as a phi because later I will have a uh, my notation wise will be simplified because I will be using psi for three particles. So let us write phi 1, phi 1, phi 2, phi 3. Okay. So this is, so when all three particles will sit here, that will correspond to the, that will correspond to the minimum energy. So my minimum energy will be 3 uh, and, and also uh, let us write epsilon. So my minimum energy will be 3 epsilon 1. Okay. So E ground state of three particle will be like this. And wave function, wave function, now I'm writing psi, three wave function, so three particle will be x1, x2, and x3. So let me multiply the first wave function will be sine n is 1, so pi x1 by L for first particle, then wave function for second particle pi x2 by L, then wave function for the third particle pi x3 by L. So this will be my ground state energy and wave function of three particles. And normalization. Normalization is not, right now it is not important. Normalization will be important. Now question is that, is that clear to everybody? I have used, let me repeat, one particle solution. I know the idea that when you have multi-particle energy will be add up, wave function will be multiplied. Now I am considering the non-interacting distinguishable particle. Identical particle will have a different situation that will come. But right now we are considering distinguishable particle, so it will be. Now, now tell me what will be the first excited state. So this is my ground state. Let me write first excited state. So what will be these two? So let me let me ask uh, some student. Uh, Manjulata, can you tell me that uh, what will be the first excited state energy? 
very easy just think of it i said that if all three particles sits in the lowest state then it corresponds to the minimum possible energy and that will correspond to ground state no other possibility particle cannot have less than this energy to this now what will happen Monjulata, can you hear us? If you don't know, then say you don't know. I will not wait for you. I think she is not listening. Uh, Diksha, Diksha Rai, are you listening? Yes, sir. Huh. Tell me what will be the first excited state energy of three particles. Very easy. I said all three particles occupy the lowest state. It will be the minimum possible energy. Now, what so will then, be? Huh. So one, one of them will be in second excited state. Means n equal to 2. Okay, good. So one of them, if, if, if uh, it goes to uh, this upper state, then it will have next possible energy. But which particle will go to the upper state? Who will go to the upper state? That is, this is the thing. So suppose I assume they are distinguishable particles. So suppose I assume their mass is m1, m2, and m3. And let us assume that m1 is greater than m2, m2 is greater than m3. This is important because nothing was mentioned and they are distinguishable particles. So I'll assume their different mass. I cannot take their mass are same. So now tell me, this is my first particle, this is second particle, and this is third particle. So M3 mass is the lowest mass. So which particle will go in the upper state? Lowest mass state or high mass state or the middle one? Who will go? Evita, Evita can you answer this? Hello, are you listening, Evita? Yes, sir. Huh, tell me, which particle will go up such that I have minimum energy? Next possible energy. Minimum energy is all three are sitting there. Now, which will go up such that I'll have next possible minimum energy? Second lowest energy. Uh, M1 will go up. M1 will go up. Why? M1 is the heavier mass. Yes, sir will go up. Why? Tell me your, your answer is correct. But now correct, I need correct explanation. Since M1 is greater, uh, the energy value. Will... Yeah, very good. Very good. So, so among these three particles, if I assume M1 greater than M2 and M3, then this first particle will go up, not the third particle, because, because if I M1 is here, heavier mass, it costs less energy. So heavier mass will cost less energy, so it will go up. So first, it will be, uh, so energy will be, let us write, pi square, h car square by uh, m1. Here, here I wrote 3 epsilon 1, so in that sense it is not correct. I should write epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3, all are the... Uh, because if your mass is different, the energy will not be equal. Okay, so pi h car square two m one l square, then pi h uh, no, so it will be four, and pi h car uh, pi square h car square two m two h car square, no 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 l square plus pi square h car square. 2m3 uh, l square. See, this is 4 I have written because it will go to the second state. Second state is n equal to 2, so n square equal to 4. So, this will be my next possible energy. And this will go up because m1 is higher. So, this will be less energy. If m2 would have been got up, then this term will be greater and, and uh, energy will be more. So that will correspond to the second excited state. This is first excited state. 
similarly wave function so wave function for first particle will be sine now sine then n so 2 pi x1 by l then sine pi x2 by l then sine pi x3 by l okay is that clear I wrote this first particle in the upper position. So, first particle in the upper position, second particle in the n equal to 1 state, third is also n equal to 1. So, so this is the wave function for n equal to um, 1 state. This is also wave function for n equal to 1 state for third particle, but first particle is n equal to 2. So, it will be 2 pi x 1 by L and their product. Okay, and so on. You, you can find go on like this. I am not going to do that. I am now telling you that suppose these particles are bosons. So, now I will repeat this whole exercise. Uh, maybe I can erase here. So, it will be easier for me. Okay. So, now non-interacting, but let me put they are indistinguishable and not only indistinguishable, I said that they are boson, boson are simpler. Okay. So, uh, let me let me erase this also and uh, I will draw the lines here again. So, okay. So, let me, this is my uh, n equal to 3, this is my n equal to 2 and this is my n equal to 1. Corresponding wave function phi 1, phi 2 and phi 3 energies are epsilon 1, uh, 3, epsilon 2, epsilon 1. Okay. Now, if they are bosons, so what will be the ground state energy? Bosons, uh, bosons. So if I all bosons if sit together, then uh, ground state energy will be same, right? All, all all boson can be in the this state. And now they are bosons, so mass cannot be this. So mass say let us mass is m because mass difference means it cannot be indistinguishable. So mass is m. So then energy will be again e, uh, epsilon one plus epsilon two plus epsilon three. So it will be three epsilon where epsilon is uh, pi square h car square 2 uh, m l square. Okay. So, it energy will be 3 epsilon. Now, now mass is equal. So, I can add them to 3. Earlier I did it, but that was mistake. Mass are different. So, energy will be epsilon 1 is so for distinguishable. For indistinguishable, there will be. Now, there is no difference with the particle with which was distinguishable and which are indistinguishable for the ground state because they are same. They, they, these are bosons, but still they occupy the same state, so no problem. But energy, psi ground state. So, let me write psi ground state. So, it will be sine uh, n equal to 1, so pi x1 by L sin pi x2 by L sin pi x3 by L. So, uh, so if I now, now additional thing I have to do that this wave function has to be symmetric because this is boson. Symmetric means if I interchange 1 and 2 or if I interchange 1 and 3 or if I interchange 2 and 3 or any possible interchange. These 3 are the possible interchange. This wave function will be same. Symmetric means plus sign, same. So, now you change that. If I interchange x and x2, is symmetric or not? Jayanto Mahato, is, is that wave function symmetric if I interchange x1 and x2? Yes, sir. Symmetric. Yeah, symmetric. If I interchange x1 and x3, it will also 
good so if if they are same state whether i write here x1 or x2 or x3 they are always symmetric so we don't have to do anything so even for identical bosons this is my answer but now if i go to the second uh, first excited state so this is this wave function is symmetric so i don't have to do anything even if it is boson answer for the ground state is exactly same for distinguishable and boson for the ground state now go to the first excited state first excited state again uh, so let me erase here so So what will happen again? As uh, 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 we know that uh, now, now uh, uh, this particle uh, so uh, so E first excited for three particles. So one of the particle will go up. So suppose third particle. Now they are distinguishable, uh, indistinguishable. So whether first particle is going up or second particle is going up or third particle is go going up, we don't know. So one of them will go up. Okay. So so that will uh, so energy will be just uh, um, energy will be two times epsilon. Epsilon is that uh, n equal to one state energy plus two times because two particles are there. Two particles is n equal to one and one particle so one times. This is, let me write epsilon 1, this is epsilon 2, okay. So this is the energy, first excited state. Now ground, wave function, uh, after this wave function, I will stop. It is 10 o'clock and, and I think you do not have a class right now, this P2 group, but I will take only 2-3 minutes. So if I go to the, now, now assuming the third particle is up, then energy uh, wave function will be sine pi x1 l sin pi x2 l sin 2 pi x3 l if, if third particle go up. But now is this wave function symmetric under say uh, x2 and x3 Jagriti? No sir. It is not symmetric but it is boson. So we have to make it symmetric, yes. but is, it is symmetric between x1 and x2. Yes, sir, but not if in I, x3. Be, huh, but x1 and x3, it is not symmetric, x1 and x2 and x3, it is not symmetric. So how will make it symmetric? That is the important thing you have to learn how to make the wave function symmetric and in case of fermions, how to make the wave function anti-symmetric. I said the third particle will go up all three particles are identical, then why third will go up? If all are same, if boys and girls are same, then why boys has to do this or why girls has to do this? So they will not, I don't know. So what will the possible configuration will be say third is up, then plus this possibility is also there, second is up, then this possibility is there, first is up, second and third is now add all this so if i add so this i have already done second one will be sine second is up so pi x1 by l sine 2 pi x2 by l then sine pi x3 by l and then third configuration third configuration will be let me write here third configuration will be First is up, so sine 2 pi x1 by L, second and third in the pi x2 by L, sine. It's gone up, now second one has gone up, now first one has gone up. So everybody, all are identical. So everybody, all possible who will go up. So all three possibilities of going up, I have considered. And I wrote corresponding mathematical expression and I get the symmetric. Now you change. If I change one and three, then I'll get this wave function. One and three in interchange, I'll get this. 
So this will change to this, this will change to this. Total wave function will be symmetric. If I interchange 1 and 2, it is always symmetric. Earlier also it was symmetric. Now also it will be symmetric. You can check that. So this is called symmetrization. Now, if you have understood what I taught here, you can find the second excited state. Find E second excited state for three bosons and psi second excited state. I will not do this unless you have some question and, and I am sure all of you will be able to do. Now, now question is that two particles will go up. Okay, so either second and third will go up or first and second will go up or first and third will go up and you add up those, you will get the energy. Energy eigenvalues will be, this will be only one particle in the one state, two particles, so this will be two into epsilon two. So I have given the answer. Third part, third excited state, fourth excited state, all you will able to find. So you have now found, if I have identical bosons, what will be the wave function? Now, next class, we'll start with the identical fermions and we'll see the situation. So, I'll stop here unless you have some question because uh, some student from group one may have class. Again, I so, found few people. Uh -huh. Tell me. Uh, sir, when I was solving your assignment problem, sir, I found some difficulties. Uh, can I say I, now? No, no, yeah, uh, but I uh, that regarding the cross section, no? yes, sir. But that I explained in the beginning. I said, yes, sir, many uh, I heard it, but sir, uh, huh. few then things are after there. hearing that, then on that, what is your confusion? Tell me, uh, sir, uh, the states, uh, first and second uh, equation, uh, the incoming and outgoing particles, both are same, sir. Okay, then, sir, no problem. Uh, uh, no then, sir, uh, when I was calculating the amplitude, then, sir, uh, so both sides it was cancelling up. No, not in, no, you are not correct, doing correct. So, pi plus going to pi plus. So, this set is 1, 1 and uh, one, half, half, right? And yes, if sir. you calculate this state, this will be 3 by 2, 3 by 2. I said that you calculate in the coupled space. So, 3 by 2, 3 by 2. Now, I said the amplitude for this process. So, let us write MA will be. Uh, mm, so, this side is 1, 1. Let me write and half, half and 3 by 2, 3 by 2. Okay. And there will be some H interaction. Some Hamiltonian will be there. So, this you have to calculate. Where it is cal uh, cancelling out? So now uh, this state, this state is exactly 3 by 2, 3 by 2. There will be some interacting Hamiltonian which uh, responsible for scattering. So this, so this will be, if I, if you don't write this, then it will be 1. How it cancelling that I don't understand. So this will be some proportional to M 3 by 2. I am writing M 3 by 2 because this is corresponding to isospin 3 by 2. So, M A I, as I said, will be a proportional to M 3 by 2. Similarly, for other M B and M C, you have to calculate and then you will get uh, and you have to assume M 3 by 2, M, th M 3 by 2 is very, very greater than M half. You will get M half also. Then you will get the answer. Okay, so sir. You, you are not doing correctly. If you are getting cancelling here, then I, I just calculate it. Do it same thing for two and three process and then you will get uh, the answer. Yes, sir, I was putting uh, three by two in both side. I, was so, no, I, am, I am also putting three by two in both side. Then uh, where it is getting zero that I want to understand from you. If, 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 if this Hamiltonian is one, suppose no, nothing is there. Then it will be a normalized state. It will be one. Okay, sir. And so no. for second state? No, I will not do for second and third. You have to do yourself, otherwise you leave it for time being. I have given enough hint and if you, with this hint, if you cannot do, then it is not your learning. I am, I hate the Medici books. I hate the solution book. So you have to think, you have to, I have given one step. Now, even I have solved the first problem, which is exactly similar, but this 
in additional information is needed that is why i'm giving now now no further hint on this problem i'll give to anybody okay you, sir. you discuss among yourself you think it if you cannot do think second times think third times then you will find the answer yourself and you will be very happy when you find yourself any other question those who are up to leave you can leave class is over now now uh, if there is anybody has any question uh, i'll i'll answer this or other will stop and again repeatedly i am saying that there are still people coming late next time it is decided if you are ten, more than 10 minutes late i'll not allow you and those there are few people who has poor internet i don't know raji pollad shamir uh, vishnu all these people continuously coming in and going out so you make sure you have a good internet 3g internet is good enough if you have 4g is fine otherwise 3g also will be but come to a place where you have signal or otherwise come to bhu campus you have free internet but continuously coming in and going out neither helps you or me any other thing otherwise you can leave now <laughs>